Okay, Keith here with another statistical video on R and in this one I'm going to look at indicator species and the calculation of something called the indicator value. These are becoming more increasingly used in recent times. Now I'm only going to look at one indicator value and one calculation. There are others but the one I'm looking at is the one that seems to be most widely used. And we have used it in some of our work. Now when you've got a whole set of species it would be useful to pick out those that reliably indicated particular sites or particular conditions and focus on those. When there's a large number of species and also samples this can be difficult to do. We can for instance see in here that crustacean 4 is absent from all of those impact samples but it's also absent from three control samples. Compare that with crustacean 6 which is absent in all samples there and present in all samples there. It's also present in all samples here, control site 2, but is also turning up in less abundance at impact site 2. Crustacean 10 here is completely absent from the shallower water. Now these considerations are a bit vague and it'd be nice to have something that was more concrete. And the something that is more concrete is INVAL. And INVAL looks at two things to do with species. Specificity and fidelity. I'll put these links up on the LearnLine page. So you can see over here, good indicator species would be those that are both abundant in a specific type of habitat, so that's specificity, they are specific to a particular habitat, and predominantly found there. That's fidelity, so they're found there but not in other habitats. So abundance in that habitat compared to other locations and mostly found in that habitat compared to other locations. And so the inval is a numeric value between 0 and 100 calculated pretty much as it says here specificity versus fidelity. So what we do for each species is go along and look at its relative abundance in that kind of site and how frequently it's found in that kind of site to how frequently it's found in other locations. So back to our data here. Well in this scenario the main thing we're concerned with is control versus impact because that's the environmental impact. Now I'm not particularly concerned about site 1 versus site 2 versus site 3. Those are different locations but the impact locations, the impact samples, the impact sites, those are the ones that I want to be able to monitor and identify. Now to use INVAL we need to give it information about the sites or habitats or groups and this is going to be numeric information. Can't work with this here. So I've got another file now called group which just has the status one for control and two for impact for all of the samples. And importantly it's in the same order as those samples in the species data file. So if we look here there's the group yeah, comma separated value file and let's go over into RStudio. So I've done the usual bit of loading up the uh, package. We only need one here, labs DSV, and you can also see I've loaded in the data files. Uh, I don't appear to have loaded in the species data file. Oh, poor. 
Okay, I had temporarily renamed the species data file while I checked the format. So now I've got the species there. It still has codes down here for status. Um, and also got species groups here. Okay, back here. Now, from now on we're only going to work with the species data. So this line here simply creates a data file that is just the species. And then this next line here one, yeah, looks odd and it's not going to do anything this time, but in other situations it's important. What it does is removes the species which are absent from all samples. Now that can happen with the simulated data with small numbers of samples. OK, now I need to calculate indicator values. Well, done. Now the last things here are just about extracting various results so that we can later look at them. And lastly, I'm going to save this as a comma separated value. And there it is. So what have we got down here? First of all, you can see I've got the species listed in order of decreasing indicator value. Bigger indicator value is better, smaller indicator value is worse. Next to that is the group. This indicates the group they are in indicator for. So the first ones here are all indicators of group 1 or control. And for this data set I only have one indicator for the polluted sites. Crustacean 2 is an indicator species for polluted sites. What else are we looking at here? The frequency. This is how many times in those samples the, this tax occurred. Uh, you can see that varies. And then next is the p-value calculated, testing whether or not this is a this indicator value is significantly higher than we would expect. And so in the file here we have just those species where the probability associated with the indicator value is greater than 0 0.05. So you can see here 0 0.022 for crustacean number 2. For all the other taxa, their indicator value is not significant. The value we see could occur by chance with species being randomly assigned to either control or impact locations. Now it's not surprising that there's more indicators of control locations than of impact locations in this particular set of simulated data. Most species react negatively to the pollution and there's only a few that will react positively and only one of those can be identified as significantly associated with the polluted areas. Now, where we are here, we've got a total of 44 taxa that are identified and this is about as far as I'd go without doing further tests because each of these is a separate test of the null hypothesis. Each null that's tested has a 0 0.05 chance of being significant by chance and so we're getting up to the level here where a few of these, potentially 2, 3, 4, could be significant by chance. And the most likely ones are the ones down towards the bottom of the list here. Where the p-value is 0 0.001, that's um, 0.1 of a percent. Uh, so these are highly significant. So what I can say, if I want to pick a group of indicate species, I could pick, say, 
maybe fish, maybe a set here that includes some mollusks, some worms and some crustaceans. And I could monitor those instead of having to monitor all of those taxa, which would be expensive and time consuming. 